Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum, once said, whereas most technologies tend to automate workers on the periphery doing menial tasks, blockchains automate away the center. Instead of putting the driver out of a job, blockchain puts the Uber out of a job and lets the taxi driver work with customer directly. What it also means, in another words, is blockchain is the key to prosperity. How? Let's figure this out with our guest on Zoom call. But before that, let me welcome all the viewers of Crypto TV. And I am your host, Parvati Nirvan. And today I have with me on Zoom call, Mr. Ashwin Safaya, who has many years of experience in building and scaling ventures related to crypto assets and its underneath technology blockchain across Southeast Asia. Let's welcome our guest. Hello, Mr. Ashwin. Hi, Parvati. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm glad to be here and thanks for inviting me for this uh, discussion. Great, great, great. I'm doing well. So let's move to the first question, right? Sure, sure. So as you are associated with many startup companies for building and scaling their businesses across Southeast Asia, what are the use cases on which these companies are working on? So, uh, 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 Pavati, that, that's a very interesting question. And I primarily work uh, very closely in the startup ecosystem, primarily in the emerging tech space, especially with startups or businesses who are, you know, leveraging and utilizing emerging tech uh, technologies, okay. uh, especially in the blockchain space. So we help them expand and position in Southeast Asia and APAC region. So there are varied and diverse use cases across all domains, right? For you know, right from fintech to AI to blockchain and, uh, you know, underlying use cases or under, underlying utilization of the blockchain or emerging technologies. Right. So, yeah, that, that that's a very interesting space to sort of, you know, figure out uh, and very broad as well. Right, right, right. So what are, like, can you name some use cases precisely like the companies that you're working with? So we work with companies across the whole emerging tech ecosystem, right from fintech to edtech to martech, and mm -hmm. especially in the blockchain space, mm -hmm. we work on multiple applications of blockchain technology, right from crypto to exchanges to you know real world applications across multiple industries. Let's say in BFSI, right from you know transactions to cost cross border transactions, remittances, etc. Right. to document exchange on blockchain to data and identity so there are like varied and diverse use cases which could be obviously adapted and implemented across the whole ecosystem right uh, you right. know across industry right 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 so continuing the first questions are there any company or companies that are based out of india and if yes then what kind of uh, businesses are being developed in the crypto space by those companies so, Parvati, I'm sure that there must be many businesses which are based out of India and outside of India in the greater region. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they must be trying or rather building, you know, different business models related to use and applications of crypto and blockchain as a technology. Mm -hmm. These both are, you know, somewhat used interchangeably by a lot of people, but they are actually separate and different you know, use of technology. So blockchain is the underlying technology. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I believe right from, you know, sort of new crypto exchanges to more of more diverse and expansive use and utilization of blockchain as a technology mm -hmm. across varied use cases and industry verticals. Mm -hmm. Can you name few? Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, like in, instead in of naming of... the company, uh, just the the uh, applications, the kind of applications being developed, if the companies that you're dealing with, which are based out of like India. So, uh, Pavati, again, applications have been developed across various layers. Mm -hmm. One could be platform applications. So there could be blockchain platforms, which could cater to multiple use cases. There are a lot of companies or businesses which are developing black blockchain platforms, which mm -hmm. could cater to respective processes, areas, and use cases right. across various in industry verticals. Like, for example, in banking and financial services, there could be platforms which could unify, you know, uh, use of blockchain across processes, right from, as I said, accounts and transactions to payments to cash to document, and then subsequently to 
identity and data on blockchain. So there are a lot of companies. I don't, you know, remember all of them at top of my head, but there are crypto exchanges, as I said, there could be blockchain platforms, there could be certain frameworks and protocols. So it cuts across various segments and layers of, you know, use of emerging tech, especially blockchain. Yeah, I understand, understand. I just wanted to ask and understand, uh, like, is there any difference uh, when uh, uh, the uh, specific use cases comes when the companies are from India and otherwise, like, because you are dealing with all the Southeast Asia region, right? So that is that is yeah, where I'm coming so, from. So typically, use cases would depend on the key pain areas and the kind of, you know, pain points which a particular industry is facing. So be that for that matter be it india or any other country there are you know similar, similar. if not uh, same you know applications of the technology as such mm -hmm. but then it could really depend on what kind of you know uh, use cases are being positioned and what kind of pain areas a particular business wants to solve so for a crypto exchange the use case could be just trading of cryptocurrencies yes. for example yes, yes. but understand. for a blockchain platform it could be completely different mm -hmm. So out of the many blockchain use cases that you have mentioned so far, one of the use cases is tokenization. Uh, can we discuss about that? Sure, Parvati. Uh, I think tokenization is itself a very interesting use case uh, mm -hmm. for use and leveraging you know, blockchain technology. And I think uh, the reason it's, it's quite interesting and you know, sort of diverse is because it has diverse applicability across industries as well as you know, business processes and use cases. Hmm. So for example, you know, there can be multiple use cases or business processes, which can be possibly tokenized. And hmm. then those use cases could cater to, for example, you know, in BFSI space, in banking and financial services industry, the hmm. biggest use case of tokenization could be payments. And, and if you look at the projections by 2023, digital transactions, uh, value would possibly surpass about 6.7 trillion dollars globally mm -hmm. so you can look at the you know expanse and the potential for applicability of tokenization of you know payments uh, mm -hmm. so it's basically you know utilizing that tokenization as a you know for for the technology to obviously issue stable coins or cryptocurrencies again depending on which use case you're driving mm. and then it could obviously help reduce costs for the payment processors and obviously and point of sale systems so i think this is uh, the major enabler of tokenization use cases catering mm. to payments which could also help enhance security safety and compliance you know for for the payment processes and transactions so Again, so this is one of the use cases. There could be other use cases across different industries. For example, you know, in fraud mitigation, for example, tokenization, how that can be used to help uh, tamper proof, you know, the online fraud. It could mm -hmm. help to do the real time analysis of various, you know, processes. It could also help to audit the systems beforehand. And then it sort of provides that enterprise grade security. How tokenization will help in that case? We have been hearing that this can happen uh, by using the entire blockchain technology. And when uh, all the things, uh, all the documentation transformed or comes on uh, uh, blockchain. But how with the tokenization that is going to help? I think tokenization is one of the components of the entire blockchain, blockchain. technology. So it is basically about yeah. So so this is one of the components how it could, you know, help mitigate certain fraud mitigation cases or scenarios. So this mm -hmm. is one of the components. Obviously, the entire end-to-end -end ecosystem has to connect and integrate. So mm -hmm. tokenization of you know a particular asset, both on the digital and the physical world could help in fraud mitigation, but then okay. it has also to connect to other, you know, uh, I would say technicalities of the whole blockchain. The applicability of tokenization or for that matter, the entire blockchain application ecosystem could cater to various industries. Mm -hmm. You know, again, issuing digital assets or tokens, it could be for sports organizations, for athletes, it could be for healthcare, you know, organizations or institutions which could issue tokenized or digital credentials for participants, it could be medical practitioners or users of that healthcare, you know, right. uh, services or, you know, right. products. The NFT is a very popular and prominent use case among all other use cases so far, right? 
do you think it's it's only a bubble that is being created and which will burst eventually and or like do you think that it has a real world application attached to it it's a very interesting question and very hard to answer at this point because nobody knows what it is uh, it there's a huge hype around nfts and in my view and whatever limited understanding in my experience what i've got of nfts is basically you know it's a bunch of computer generated variants digital variants which are put up on a web page and say for example i i sell you a sell you an nft or you know it's it's essentially a receipt to a url that says you theoretically own that uh, you know known that asset which is essentially called a nft but that that's about it i mean you you can't really work around and sort of go and prove your ownerships and even if you prove your ownerships what's what you're going to you know der- what kind of value you're going to derive with that so it's speculative it's hyped i guess at this stage and it could really time will tell how you know you could possibly use nft so essentially at this stage what i understand and what i'm seeing is it's just essentially you are trading a receipt to somebody else and then you're sort of having an nft as a digital asset to yourself so by default it just gives you no rights for example no mm. ownership rights so it's literally just a receipt for you know for for a purchase so you get a receipt in any transaction as you purchase something so it's essentially a receipt digital receipt which mm. you receive for you know sort of purchasing a digital asset which is called an nft but then you can subsequently trade it to multiple people participants etc who are interested but actual usability of nft is still uh, a big question, question on how that can be applied across you know intellectual property uh, gains or intellect property or other use cases for example what are real world applications of you know issuing or making or creating nfts as of now i do not see that much of a potential in sort of proliferating trading nfts but i think time will tell we you know couple of years back we were sort of uh, speculating about how the cryptocurrencies or digital currencies would grow and now we are at a stage where in we get a bit better clarity on how the market would you know turn out with respect to cryptocurrencies right. both right. regulated and unregulated in due course right 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 so actually what has been happening around and we keep hearing is like for example big brands like uh, nike uh, they have created uh, you know nft uh, for their shoes and then uh, we have uh, snoop dog artists like snoop dog they have created nfts of their songs and the music so all uh, a lot of big players are you know or the big artists or people who are very popular they are coming and buying it, you know for uh, that matter mr amitabh bachchan from india so you know uh, madhushala they created an nft of that so that has been happening and there's lot of hype so is the nft overhyped firstly uh, the hype that has been created for this particular use case in the blockchain if yes then why the market exuberance that powered the nft boom has given way to more cynical conditions forcing the largely speculative nft market to confront reality what is your view on that uh, i mean the current situation that is there in the market so again parvati i'll, I'll add on to what uh, you know i just said about the nft ecosystem i feel it's still very early stages nascent stages how the nft you know is developing an mm-hmm. ecosystem in terms of the applications and use cases of nft it's still to to be seen how this will be developed at mm-hmm. this stage it's more on you know connoisseurs kind of collections that you do art collection or you do a certain unique uh, probably a art or a song or a poem as as you said related to madhushala so it could be anything but what what are the larger world applications or real practical applications of the usability of nfts that still has to be seen and i you know it could just happen uh, it could go two ways one it could possibly have more expansive and diverse applications mm-hmm. for using nfts probably you could have you know more practical better usable applications of nfts just you know rather than just having a art collection digitized as an nft or for that matter anything else you know as a as a celebrity doing it for mm-hmm. for some games mm-hmm. but then time will tell and i think probably in a year or so we would know how nfts could apply across 
you know, use cases and applications, especially if we talk about metaverse in the future, how that NFT will play a part, what would be the, you know, use cases, applicability of NFT. So it's still, I would say, early stages in seeing how the NFT ecosystem develops, but then uh, it's again, uh, you know, it's it's somewhere in between uh, hype and overhype. It's somewhere in between that. So that that's what I feel. Yes, NFT has been hyped, so that's my reason uh, to particularly uh, discuss uh, this particular use case. Uh, the research says NFT data firm Non-Fungible reported that transaction volume was down 47% in first quarter of 2022 compared to the quarter previously. The data is even more stark when assessing daily average sales, which suffered a 92% decline between September 2021 to April 2022. So a washout was always inevitable for NFT market that has been light on value proposition, but heavy on hype. Will this fall continue? What do you think? Again, I, I would just extend what, what I, I just said, uh, you know, based on the points you raised earlier, which are very pertinent. These are very interesting and very pertinent questions related to the current ecosystem and what's been happening in the blockchain slash NFT slash crypto space. So I feel, uh, mm -hmm. as I said, it's it's still early stages or, you know, not not that as a sort of early adoption of NFTs, just very, you know, niche adoption across some areas of art collection, etc. Mm. Uh, so I think uh, this has to be seen possibly six months down the line as we have also better clarity on metaverse, you know, how the different use cases. I will, applications I will come be to metaverse. In, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so Parvati, I feel it possibly again, if it does not go beyond the current applications and possibly, you know, real world uh, use cases for yes. NFT, I think it's going to fall further. It probably go down the same road as currently crypto is going uh, right. across, you know, our, our various segments. Yeah. yeah. So y what you are saying in the nutshell is it's a big question mark, right? At, at this it's point. a big question mark at, at the moment. And yes. I think, again, if it does not go beyond the current you know, applications, it may further, you know, go down the Fall. drain or probably uh, become obsolete. Okay. 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 <laughs> A big remark. Fine. Let's move to the another question. Uh, the one you mentioned that which is the another popular use case, like I'm talking in with respect to the use case that has been developed metaverse. Uh, what are the technologies that can be incorporated with the metaverse ecosystem? And will the integration of various technologies is the evolution of Web 3.0? If yes, then how? Yeah, again, a metaverse is a very interesting and, you know, uh, I won't say high, but it's a, it's a very looked at and a trendy, you know, discussion topic and a, you know, sort of word to play around with. I think, again, a uh, lot of people are stating metaverse is the future of internet, you know, but yes. it's again, very early it is days. And early it is perceived so. Yeah, yeah, it is perceived so as a future of internet, but yes. again, we are at very, very early stages of seeing what would be the potential applications of metaverse as the ecosystem and as a newer dimension to, you know, people connecting digitally or integrating the physical and digital worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, world, sorry. So I, I think, uh, as as you as you would know, obviously, it's been almost close to six months now since FB or Facebook announced its rebranding of Meta. You know, Facebook to Meta. To Meta. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we, they are obviously seeing that how they can possibly leverage the future potential of developing a metaverse ecosystem. But essentially, Pavati, if you see metaverse, it's, mm. you know, if you replace it with a more simpler, easily understandable term, it's actually cyberspace, right? So uh, people, I mean, mm. so many people are you know, using these jargons and hype words of metaverse and this and that. Okay. But it's essentially a digital cyberspace in which various technologies would interact and, you know, communicate with each other. Yeah. Uh, recently, I've just like come across, uh, there is a, a integration of AI technology in the metaverse uh, with which uh, doctors are performing surgery. So uh, uh, actually, I'm coming from that space wherein people are integrating various technology into the space to make it work. Not that those technologies are new. The other the technologies, for example, IoT also, for example, if they are including IoTs. 
so they are developing or they are at definitely at a very early stage to develop and uh, go forward with this but how do you how do you see that progressing i think again this is this is a space which is as you rightly said it is still at a earlier stage of development and seeing how this could be a potential you know uh, i would say practical applications across industry areas especially in healthcare as you said for probably doing surgeries robotically or using robotics mm -hmm. and this could be a use of ai and other technologies mm -hmm. how it would integrate with metaverse it's still a you know a mark. question which bro, probably we would have to ponder on mm -hmm. right right fine let's move to the very interesting question that i was waiting for because you come from the southeast asia market so southeast asia market is the emerging market in crypto space right what are the countries that uh, actually are uh, you know uh, business generating countries for you guys and uh, uh, what are the sectors which are more prominent like the business being developed so essentially pavati we actually work with businesses who are looking to expand scale and further position their you know their business or offerings in the southeast asia apac region mm -hmm. so of course it's a emerging uh growing and a very huge potential market for a lot of businesses especially in the emerging tech space mm -hmm. be it in ai metaverse uh blockchain crypto so it's a global hub anyway mm -hmm. and it's a financial services hub mm -hmm. you know if if i talk about singapore it's a financial hub and a, you know a global port hub as well mm -hmm. in terms of the supply chain and port operation so i think there's a huge uh, potential for multiple applications of various technologies so i i think uh, that that's what we are currently sort of seeing which kind of businesses we can probably work very closely on to help them further position their offerings uh, and potential use cases and applications across industry areas yes yes so uh, the way singapore is becoming or emerging as a hub for crypto space uh, dubai is also offering a lot of things to companies uh, uh, and it is actually emerging as another hub towards this side so what what do you think about dubai in that case so again uh, i would i would say dubai is at the same league with the respect to singapore it still you know has uh, put on certain regulations and certain features in attracting more stakeholders i would say businesses stakeholders even you know uh high skilled it professionals or skilled technology professionals to go to the country and further innovate further develop new technologies or research on new technologies and then subsequently see what could be the potential applications mm -hmm. so dubai i see as a emerging uh you know becoming a emerging crypto slash financial hub it's uh, probably competing with singapore at the moment and <laughs> it could even you know come closer to what singapore wo people are highly sensitivity. attracted to dubai that way like the businesses yeah, are going yeah. there <laughs> so this this is what's happening so for example in dubai mm. they have relaxed the certain regulations, regulations. for you going mm. as a professional so if you want to go to dubai mm. and you operate in a certain technology you have a certain skill set and you have something to sort of you know go to that country and develop then you can go off you don't need a sponsorship from a particular business or a company to hire you you mm -hmm. can just go there apply for a you know let's say independent visa which could quote you as a uh, let's say freelance or a solopreneur or an entrepreneur which is doing something and then you know you could go into the country likewise singapore is also doing certain things similar to that mm. but you know those are still a bit more stringent and more i would say you know difficult to cross mm. uh then dubai so dubai is trying to sort of become the new uh, crypto slash financial services hub yes. and a tech hub as well yes course. yes because they are more open to uh more open with the regulations that they are forming they are more open to people coming and more open to businesses startups as well right yeah yeah in fact in fact what what i uh, in my view dubai has been a blockchain hub even way before then singapore was sort of getting to that perception mm -hmm. of becoming a financial services slash you know emerging tech hub and you can say blockchain hub but yes. dubai was doing uh, in a lot of in rounds uh, sorry in you know building certain grounds into developing as a blockchain hub closer to when they were planning to do expo 2020 mm -hmm. 
which got obviously you know uh, didn't happen because of the covid pandemic but then they are further developing to you know make dubai as a as a yes, tech hub yes dubai expo actually was covered by our team as well actually oh awesome oh, yes awesome. yes we were there <laughs> great insight anyways so singapore wants to become the next hub for the crypto market right still the regulatories are yet to be formed how receptive singapore is in terms of forming those regulatories or uh, we can say how considerate the government will be in this matter so parvati again i am not a you know i am not a government or regulatory professionals but i would just uh, share my inputs in terms of my experience and you know how i have learned interacting with the larger ecosystem as right. such so please go ahead no problem you know you know as an example for mm -hmm. last in the last two years singapore and the monot you know the regulatory authority in singapore has mm -hmm. granted multiple licenses to you know to to multiple digital payment service providers including crypto currency exchanges okay. so for example Mm -hmm. You know, it included a stable coin player like Paxos, cryptocurrency exchange, uh, Coin Hacko, which mm -hmm. they have uh, you know approved the license for, mm -hmm. as well as establish enterprise level you know businesses such as DBS, which is a local bank, mm -hmm. and so they have approved for DBS Vickers a license. Mm -hmm. So again, I would say Singapore as a regulatory ecosystem is very very strict mm -hmm. and stringent. So they don't really. you know cut corners and cut uh, you know certain processes just because to approve and you know build up that perception of becoming a very liberal crypto or blockchain hub so they will take their own you know certain protocols they have to they they really follow the you know stringent processes and protocols and i think that that's for the better because that helps to you know cut out or take out the bad apples in the industry and that's very important for developing the right uh, sustainable and a long term you know any any kind of a hub so if you want to develop a crypto slash blockchain hub you would have to follow a stringent protocol and processes to make sure that only the right businesses with the you know practical applications and use cases and with a very strong uh, track record regulatory framework as well as you know the whole strong business models would get uh, you know passed on the from the gate then in that case uh, uh, what makes me think from this conversation is dubai is going to give a tough competition to singapore <laughs> absolutely absolutely so dubai is going to be a very strong competition to singapore in terms of both uh, you know attracting companies and businesses both who are doing something in the emerging tech space especially in blockchain yes. and crypto so yes. dubai is going to be a very very strong competitor for singapore <laughs> both in terms of regulations as well as you know probably developing more attractive uh, businesses. Uh, businesses for you know attracting businesses to come and uh, mm. set up their entities and invest here right 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 fine lovely this was a lovely time that i've uh, spent and it was very insightful we've got some new idea about how southeast asia market is doing and how the businesses are emerging thank you so much for your time thank you so much thank you thank you parvati likewise uh, thanks for having me and pleasure to be here this was a very interesting conversation that i had with mr safaya to continue more such conversations i will bring you guys a lot more such episodes with the experts till then take care and to stay updated with the happenings of crypto world do watch our daily news bulletin in hindi and english both twice a day only on crypto tv and don't forget to subscribe our youtube channel crypto tv i am your host parvati nirban signing off for now bye bye